Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, we are we are exploring the Bible together once again and have another episode. Uh, I am Pastor Jake Fain, along with my colleagues. Deacon Andrew Moore. And Pastor Paul Miller. And we're here to go deeper in what it means to be a people um, enmeshed in the Bible and how it can come alive in our lives. And so I hope that um, these videos can help you um, as a start and as an introduction to go deeper for yourself. Today, today we're going to talk about justice, the theme of justice. And I want you to just to think real quick about what does that word evoke in your mind? And then uh, we're going to watch a video on it. And then have some discussion and some thoughts and shared thoughts about what that biblical image of justice is. So let's go ahead and watch this video. If you were a praying mantis, it would be socially acceptable to devour your mate. And if you're a honey badger, you have no regard for other animals. You don't care. If you're a panda with twins, it's normal to abandon one to take care of the other. But if humans do any of these things, we would call it wrong, unfair, or unjust. Yeah, why is that? Why do humans care so much about justice? Well, the Bible has a fascinating response to that question. On page one, humans are set apart from all other creatures as the image of God. Yeah, God's representatives who rule the world by his definition of good and evil. And this identity, it's the bedrock of the Bible's view of justice. All humans are equal before God and have the right to be treated with dignity and fairness no matter who you are. And that would be nice if we all did that. But we know how the world really works. And the Bible addresses that too. It shows how we are constantly redefining good and evil to our own advantage at the expense of others. Yeah, self-preservation. And the weaker someone is, the easier it is to take advantage of them. And so in the biblical story, we see this happening on a personal level, but also in families and then in communities and in whole civilizations that create injustice, especially towards the vulnerable. But the story doesn't end there. Out of this whole mess, God chose a man named Abraham to start a new kind of family. Specifically, Abraham was to teach his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. Yeah, doing righteousness, that's a Bible word I don't really use, but what comes to mind is being a good person. But what does that even mean, being good? The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. like. Here, in the book of Proverbs, what does it mean to bring about just righteousness? Open your mouth for those who can't speak for themselves. And what do these words mean for the prophets, like Jeremiah? Rescue the disadvantaged and don't tolerate oppression or violence against the immigrant, the orphan, and the widow. And like here, look in the book of Psalms. The Lord God upholds justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, and sets the prisoner free but he thwarts the way of the wicked. Whoa, he thwarts the wicked? Yeah, in Hebrew, the word wicked is rasha. It means guilty or in the wrong. It refers to someone who mistreats another human, ignoring their dignity as an image of God. So justice and righteousness is a big deal to God. Yes, it's what Abraham's family, the Israelites, were to be all about. They ended up as immigrant slaves, being oppressed unjustly in Egypt. And so God confronted Egypt's evil, declaring them to be rasha, guilty of injustice. And so he rescued Israel. But the tragic irony of the Old Testament story is that these redeemed people went on to commit the same acts of injustice against the vulnerable. And so God sent prophets who declared Israel guilty. But they weren't the only ones. There's injustice everywhere. Yeah, some people actively perpetrate injustice. Others receive benefits or privileges from unjust social structures they take for granted. 
And sadly, history has shown that when the oppressed gain power, they often become oppressors themselves. So we all participate in injustice, actively or passively, even unintentionally. We're all the guilty ones. And so this is the surprising message of the biblical story. God's response to humanity's legacy of injustice is to give us a gift, the life of Jesus. He did righteousness and justice, and yet he died on behalf of the guilty. But then God declared Jesus to be the righteous one when he rose from the dead. And so now Jesus offers his life to the guilty so that they too can be declared righteous before God, not because of anything they've done, but because of what Jesus did for them. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, the only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life, and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Well, uh, powerful video. Lots to uh, lots to process. Lots going on. Um, really, I think the way that they did this stylistically, um, with the blocks going up and down, was such a helpful image. Um, I think I found myself relating to certain characters or situations, or I remember what that kind of feels like, or gee, I've, I've been there before, or I know this group of people and imagine this may be what they're going through, or, you know, so I, I, I to me, that was really interesting, the way that they use that, that style and that image of the different levels of the blocks from a family perspective, from a community perspective, um, from a societal perspective, because it really points out that, that for scripture, our Bible teaches us that justice is about the way that we are in relationship with one another. And that if we are out of balance in our relationships with others because of the systems and structures and the ways that things have developed and evolved, we will not be able to, to be in right relationship with other people, even when we want to. And I think that that, for me, really helps bring about the difference between charity and justice. We, we saw the images of people on different levels. Well, charity would be saying, oh, there's a person down there. Let me throw them some food. That's great. They have now eaten. They haven't moved. And, and I think that we as Christians, um, one of our challenges is... We're great at charity. We're generous. We're kind. When something happens, we respond, whether it's refugees or natural disasters. I mean, you know, people are, are quick to say, how can I help? But we tend to do that in ways that may not necessarily change the playing field. And I think this video really, to me, is, is convicting and challenging because of that. Yeah, well, and, and it's yeah, challenging because it's convicting because um, we start talking about this and we feel that, uh, was it Russia? We feel that, that declaration of guilt. Mm -hmm. And I think, honestly, we telegraph that, that guilt as much when we talk about it as when we refuse to talk about it. Because why are we refusing to talk about it? Because we have that deep sense of guilt. Um, so I love getting into the biblical concepts. Um, I mean, that's just so helpful that Siddika righteousness is about relationship. It's about restored, healed relationships. Then we, then we have a picture of what's the goal here, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and another piece I thought was really helpful was 
And they, they did it so well in the graphic that the whole society is declared Russia when there is this, um, you know, this in, inequality, this judgment between people, this alienation between people, the different levels, and then the whole society is declared Russia. So I think that's one of our ways of dealing with that individual sense of guilt. Are you saying I'm doing things unjust? Um, you know, we get defensive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a declaration and a, and a, a truth telling about a whole society that we're part of. So yes, you're implicated in all these unjust things um, and called to you know, this work of restoration, which they did so well. Again, Jesus turning people around, re uh, removing the burden of that guilt in one sense so that they then can be agents of, agents of the kingdom. Um, so I found all that powerful. One thing they didn't quite say, but I thought was evoked the whole time they started, this is how the world, you know, the fall and the world was becoming like this. And then, and then God starts with Abraham and says, you're called to righteousness and justice. Well, the story right before Abraham is the Tower of Babel. And I thought the levels and the, these mm -hmm. people trying to get a little bit higher was evoking the Tower of Babel the whole time. So if you want to read Genesis 11, right before the call of Abraham in Genesis 12, that's what you get. And I think I mean, that's at the heart of what that Tower of Babel story is trying to get at, both an affront to God, certainly, but also this idea of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to climb higher, you know, uh, that was so well depicted, I thought. Yeah, good, good video. I really enjoyed it. And I, I asked that initial question about, you know, what is justice and what does that word evoke to you? And I know for me, growing up, it, justice was, you know, about the courts, um, about you know, police about punishment, you know, when something wrong happened and somebody was punished and, and that's what justice is, right? We, that we got justice when this bad crime happened. Um, that's a part of it, right? But I think the biblical image goes much, much deeper. And when we limit ourselves just to thinking about wrongdoing and punishment, we, we really miss out on this biblical image of what these prophets that continue to show up again and again and again. I mean, if you're going to read the Bible, you're going to run into a lot of prophets. And what are they talking about? But, but justice, you know, doing that, that Micah text, such a great text. Uh, what does the Lord require but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with the Lord? Um, that's, that, that's that deeper. And, and, and honestly, justice is really hard work. Like charity, as Deacon Andrew mentioned, um, charity is a little easier. You know, it's a little easier. To, it, it's good work, to be sure. Um, to see someone and notice someone and, and, and give something. But justice is a lot slower. It's a lot harder. And it takes a lot more self-awareness. And I think that might be the hardest part of it all is that, you know, we, I think we grow up in a culture where we assume that everyone's on equal footing. And, um, you know, if you just begin to look around in your neighborhood, <laughs> um, the things that you have um, that you've been given, you, you begin to realize not everyone has the same amount. Not everyone has the same gifts. And that's what's so darn hard about justice is that not everyone's on an equal footing. There's taller people. There's shorter people. There's, you know, people with intellectual gifts and, and those, you know, intellectually disabled. There's, you know, we're all different. Um, and then you throw in the complexity over time of, of systems in place that begin to stratify and people in power. And all of a sudden, over time, it gets that chasm. And I love the graphics again of, of the up and down and the towers. Um, they begin to be really evident and not so evident to the people on top, I would, I would mind. You know, they're looking out straight ahead and everything looks good. But the people on the bottom looking up, um, it's very evident the injustice around. And I think that's where the, the prophets, where God sends those prophets and in the Bible to be able to uh, help us see once again, um, what injustice is and what our calling is um, to strive for justice and walk humbly with the Lord. That's hard work, once again, but that's a part of our discipleship and, and really being immersed in that biblical story of any time we've been given something. Uh, and, and it starts there with this generosity. We talked about that in another video. Everything we've been given is a gift from God. You know, we, we might like to think that we, we earned it or this is mine, um, but if everything is a gift from God, um, that means there's a responsibility we have to work toward making sure, like Abraham, in his calling to be righteous and to be a blessed, blessed to be a blessing. That's the call of the church as well. Um, we all 
we all have a calling to walk together and make sure justice uh, thrives. Yeah, as you say that, you know, one of the things that strikes me or comes to mind is I think that we have a real misreading about justice often because we start with the premise that everybody gets what they deserve. And we then go from there to say, well, if they're not doing well, that's probably because they don't deserve it. And even though we may pity people, even though we may say, well, I'll do something to at least ease their distress, um, we kind of, you know, we'll, we'll take the burden of, of mercy. We'll do that. But we tend to push justice off on God and say, God, you design things the way you want them to be. And we'll do our best to be nice to people. <clears throat> And I think that we, what we do is we, we, you know, we, I love this video because it shows the way that justice happens is that the people themselves have to work to make it happen. It's not just that God miraculously says, <clears throat> there's justice and everybody's equal. Um, we, we bear the responsibility for that. Uh, we are the ones who are the agents of justice in our society. And as Christians, as people who follow this God, we are called to live in a way that brings light to that and confronts this idea that, well, you know, that's just the way that it is. There's always going to be rich people and poor people and some people on the top and some people on the bottom and, you know, people get what they deserve. And, you know, we, we judge, we, we justify, we, um, and, and we tend to do that again from a place of defensiveness and, you know, well, I've worked hard to get what I, what I have and how dare you, you know, make me feel guilty for having more than somebody else. And yeah, you know, we miss this whole idea that we're, what we are called to do is to be agents of justice, to actually do the work of, of restorative justice. Because if we fail to do that, we also are hurt. We may not see it immediately, but we are hurt because we are we are prevented from having restored relationships with others. And if, if for no other reason <laughs> for us to do justice is even, even somewhat selfishly for ourselves to have a healthy society and healthy restored relationships because that does benefit everyone. And, but going beyond that, you know, it really is something that, that scripture makes it very clear, Old Testament, New Testament, all the way through, God calls us to be people of justice. God calls us to be those that take an active uh, interest in see and hear what needs to be seen and heard, and then say and do what needs to be said and done. I think uh, we're talking about charity and justice, there, there's a, a real link there. If you really, if you go all in with charity, pretty soon you're putting yourself in that other person's place it is a way of acknowledging the image of god another person is to you know meet basic needs you know um and those kinds of things uh but it can lead to justice when you start to have that empathy where you see things from another perspective um i love the bible is great about that because sometimes it is kind of foreign to us and hard to get into and that's great in making us think about justice differently so like Distributive justice is a strong biblical con concept, which is not strong in our culture. Um, so you read something like the Jubilee year in Leviticus, where God gave every family a plot of land that's enough for them to sustain. And then things happen and people have to sell off their land or maybe they lose it entirely or maybe they even become debt slaves or something. And then that year comes and everybody gets their land back the way God wanted it. That's very challenging to us. I love um, Isaiah 58 talks about kind of these concrete, concrete acts of justice God calls us to, some of which make perfect sense to us, some of which are like, wow, I don't know if we can do that. Uh, another one, the Sabbath. You know, we think the Sabbath is about taking time for God, but boy, you read the Sabbath commandment in Deuteronomy, it's about not oppressing your workers <laughs> and treating them as less than right? As if you're, you're a few ranks down from me, so I can, I can get a little more work out of you. Um, so yeah, the Bible is this wonderful voice from outside our culture that can help us see things differently. And, and, and I love it for that. But I think 
maybe the best thing about the video is again and again, as, as you were both saying, you put yourself in these situations. And the powerful act is when somebody looks down from an upper level or reaches down in some way or steps down and we can put ourselves on one side of that. When have we said, hey, I don't have to do this, but I'm gonna stand with these folks, um, you know, within the family or within the wider society or whatever, or when is that time you've been the one and you have no hope of anything until somebody reaches down or steps down? And how does that feel? And then finally, that's our experience of God, is when we're the helpless one down below somehow, you know, for us and for our salvation, he came down. <laughs> uh, or, uh, or Philippians 2, Christ emptied himself and took on human form uh, for us. So, so finally, I think that's, that's our experience of God as one who comes from a place of, of greater power and, and, and pulls us up. Um, and then injustice is invited, getting invited into that, where sometimes you get to be the one reached and sometimes you get to be the one who reaches um and and then yeah we all get that benefit of the restored relationship so tons of stuff with this video you could uh pull back and almost go scene by scene it was uh, any final thoughts i know we've talked a while oh, pastor paul i'm glad you made that point i was gonna make that for sure to say you know what is what does god do you know we might think of we might think of that um justice theme of god and and the whole idea of the cross is just this punishment you know theme and there's a crime and that can be the the major overarching theological claim we get from that but when you when you get this whole rich biblical image of god's restorative justice right that's i think the key component of justice here is that god is making right relationship that's that's the that's the theological key in all this and god doesn't sit on high right in a throne with this very stratified vision, like the videos kind of showed, God comes down, as we say in the creed, and and uh, and makes that right relationship, and in so doing, unites us all, not just with Him, but with all of creation. That we're called to be uniters and uh, doers of justice, as God is just. So I, I, I mean, look no further to Jesus and how God acts, and that's the image of what true justice is. Right. Well, let's close our time with prayer. The Lord be with you. Also with you. God, we thank you for your many gifts and this day for your gift of justice. Uh, even uh, when we may feel defensive or, or confused or find it hard to bear, uh, we trust you that this is a gift uh, and ask that you would give us the wisdom to receive it and to open it uh, in our lives that we might um, receive the gifts that flow from it, of restored relationship with one another, of the, the um, dealing with the, the burden of guilt that we carry, um, and, and just the gift of seeing ourselves and the whole world in new ways. Um, we thank you for that profound act of justice in, in uh, Jesus uh, coming down among us, in Jesus joining us uh, where we are, that we might be um, uplifted and joined to him and joined to one another uh, and god let us uh let us trust in faith that uh with your help you will you will lead us into that into that kingdom pray this in jesus name amen all right thanks everybody a lot to think about this this week take care